How are we, everybody? You are very welcome along to tonight's Anfield Agenda News Roundup video. Quite a packed video, actually, tonight, so I'm not going to spend too long with the intro. You know what to do at this point. Please do drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and, of course, let me know your thoughts on the subject that I speak about in the comment section below. Right, let's get straight into it. Let's start off with a chat around Bobby Firmino. Now, I want to caveat everything I'm about to say here with one simple sentence. I don't want to lose Bobby Firmino. I'd be more than happy for Liverpool to give him a new deal. That was probably two sentences, but I didn't know I was going to say the second part when I started it. So look, there's, an, there's a, a rumoured interest from Juventus in a £19.5 million pound move for Roberto Firmino. He's got one year remaining on his Liverpool contract. And as things stand, there is no guarantee of him getting a new deal or him being here at the end of the next season. If it stood this way, he'd go on on a free contract. But the report today confused me a little bit because... Firstly, it said that Liverpool believed that the £19.5 million valuation from Juventus on Roberto Firmino is too cheap. No problem with that whatsoever. Quite frankly, I agree. I think £25 to £30 million, probably more realistic for Bobby, even with a year to go on his deal. Um, you add into that, though, the next part of it that goes to suggest that Liverpool have no interest in selling him. Well, it's kind of a bit conflicting, is it not? One sentence says they've deemed the valuation too low. The next sentence saying that they've no thoughts of replacing them. I guess this could be one of those situations that Jurgen Klopp spoke about recently during his uh, interview with Sky Sports where he said he's no plans for anybody else to come in. But if somebody was to come to him and say that he's thinking about leaving or would like to leave, then maybe they'll look at the situation. I don't want to lose Bobby. I still think he's got two or three years left on him at our level. I think in Spain or Italy, he could probably drag that out for another year or two. But for me, I don't like the idea of losing him for free either. Because I said this on last night's stream with Paddy and Chris. If we all agree that he's good enough, then we should be getting him to stay. If we agree he's not good enough, then should we consider a £30 million offer if it comes in or a £25 million offer? It is one of these weird situations where we kind of want everything and nothing as football fans. So we want the best of Bobby. But yeah, me, I don't like the idea of letting him leave for free. Um, I like the idea of Bobby controlling his destiny. Don't get me wrong. He's earned that right. But yeah, it just seems like a weird financial situation if that's the case. So I wonder will we see a situation where Bobby plays, let's say, up until the World Cup in November and then... If he's doing really well, maybe the club will look to give him a new deal. I don't know. I'd love to know your thoughts on it, though, in the comment section. Another report today, this one coming from Spain, suggests that Liverpool are closely following Athletic Bilbao's 20-year-old attacker, Nico Williams. So hang on, Craig. Don't you mean Inyaki Williams? No, this is his younger brother, Nico. Uh, be How ironic would it be, by the way, if we removed one Nico Williams from the club and looked to bring another one in? Now, I don't know how true this is. They go on to say that there's a 50 million quid valuation or bio clause in his contract at Bilbao. Um, his older brother was one of those players that seemed to be on the periphery of a move away from Bilbao for years. I mean, Inyaki Williams was spoken about as an next great prospect from, from Atletico, or excuse me, from Athletic Bilbao for a long time, but that move never materialised. He's still there. His brother, though, as is often is the case, probably the more talented of the two, the younger brother, often at times surpass the older brothers. Well, maybe not from the Hazard's perspective, but they're both frauds, if we're being honest with ourselves. Sorry, couldn't help myself. It was low hanging fruit. So look, I know I watch a lot of La Liga, but I'm not sure how much other people would watch. What do you think? 50 million bio clause seems a bit much for me. Um, And again, where would you bring them into play? If, if the rumour is true, and I don't think that it is, unless we go back to story one on this video where we potentially weigh up an offer for Bobby Firmino and then look to bring in another young attacker. But I still couldn't see a situation where Liverpool would feel comfortable spending €50 million Euro on a buyout clause for, for uh, Nico Williams because I don't think he's £50 million quid good, if I'm being honest with you. At least not now. But, you know, Jurgen Klopp has this uncanny knack of being able along with Dave Fallows and the rest of our recruitment team and Pep Linders and uh, Barry Hunter of unearthing these players who we bring in for prices that at the time some people may go hang on is that not a bit high but turn out to be just bargain so what do I know just thought I'd bring it to you guys because it is another link uh, so Virgil van Dijk you know him best centre half that's ever graced the world football pitch Virgil van Dijk him yeah so he's been speaking about um Joe Gomez and how he had a chat with Joe Gomez I'm not saying that he said he convinced Joe Gomez to stay at Liverpool but he certainly said that he had a word with Joe just before he signed his contract extension and um, trying to I suppose preach to him about why he should stay and clearly work because Joe's agreed a new deal and that's all good to see another little note from Virgil van Dijk is that he also took time out of his busy schedule to praise Fabio Carvalho 
And I think, look, Verge knows how good Carvalho is. I'm hoping that everybody else is starting to see how good Carvalho is because I was incredibly excited when they... Well, look, I won't lie. When, we found, when I found out we were interested in him way back in January, I did spend a few days looking up his clips and stuff like that, as you do. But it very quickly became clear to me that he was a very talented footballer and that the 7 million quid or whatever it is, 9.5 million, I can't remember. We've so many tribunals and fees agreed with clubs, particularly Fulham, actually, who Harvey came from as well. I think it was about 9 million for Fabio Carvalho. It's going to look like peanuts in the long term. And great to hear van dijk saying how quickly he settled how well he's looking on the training pitch only bodes for good times ahead for the future uh, next up i want to talk about sporting lisbon's Mateus nunez somebody who's been linked with liverpool manchester city and chelsea and somebody who i've mentioned on lots of video and recent posts and um, his manager though has come out and said that he's turned down offers from other clubs to stay at sporting lisbon i don't know how true this is i'd love to know what those offers were or what clubs they were from but you know, a part of me thinks I'll call poo-poo on this because if Manchester City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Bayern, whoever came calling, I find it really hard to believe at 23 years of age, having been with Sporting, that he continued to stay there and he wouldn't look to move on. He's seen other players do it. He's seen Diaz move. He's seen, uh, obviously, we've seen other players like Cancelo going to uh, Manchester City. We've seen move for Liverpool, obviously, with Darwin Nunes. So the Portuguese league is hot right now, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't believe him, basically, is what I'm saying. I don't believe the manager. I think if the offer came in, the player's head would be turned. I would look to move to one of the big clubs. So Jurgen Klopp has been speaking about Sadio Mane and the way that Sadio Mane left Liverpool. And he said that it was perfect the way it happened. He spoke about it being like losing one of his kids uh, or one of his kids moving out from home, I should say. But he also went and said that I don't want to say it's a blueprint for people of how to leave Liverpool Football Club, but he's used it as the right way of going about leaving a football club. I know I've kind of made a long-winded version of this in the way I'm trying to explain it, but he did say he was exemplary in his, his dedication, in the way he handled the situation, which is lovely to see. He's exactly what you want to hear. Look, none of us wanted to lose Sadio. None of us ever want to lose these guys who've been so important to us, but to see that he went about it in the right way and that Jurgen Klopp noticed that, that does mean a lot as well. Um, and one last thing before I finish up tonight. So we thought for the longest time that Nat Phillips was likely going to end up at Bournemouth. Well, it broke out late last night that actually Sepp van den Berg is quite close to agreeing a loan move for the season ahead to join Scott Parker's team, who of course have been promoted to the Premier League. So fresh off a good season with Preston. He's, he's impressed enough actually during pre-season as well, Sepp. Now he's caught the eye of Bournemouth and they're looking to do a deal with Liverpool that will see him go there on loan for the season. I think it's a cracking move for him. Premier League football, um, again with a young progressive team who like to play out from the back. Probably a little bit too much if I'm being honest, like in the play out from the back or the way Bournemouth like to attack. But it'll be a good move for him and one that I, I think we'll probably see happen over the next few days or so. So do keep an eye on it. Right, my friends, that's it. That's the roundup tonight. I've managed to fly through it all quicker than usual. So appreciate your time as always. If you want to catch us live, for instance, on Wednesday for the Salzburg game, I'll be live on the Anfield Agenda Twitch channel about an hour before kickoff. The link to that is in the description of this video. Enjoy your evening, my friends. I'll chat to you tomorrow. Take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye.